Ladies and welcome to another exciting edition of Poet the Poet. I'm Robert Dunn, and as you're probably aware, I do host this taffy poll here. And today we're coming to you from the Orange Bear in Tribeca, just off City Hall on Murray Street. And thanks to Nick and Andre for letting us come in and uh, take advantage of the place. Uh, there are some people I was thinking of taking advantage of, too, but uh, maybe I'll talk about that later. Uh, in the meantime, we have a couple of uh, fascinating poets uh, to share with you. We have DJ. Uh, in the hat, yes, that is a hat he's wearing, and we have George Dickerson. Now, with George, you probably recognize his face. Um, there's no reward, but uh, we'll go into that a little later, but we're going to start with the Jade. The Jade is the producer of the Writers International Poetry Show, and uh, he runs a little operation at the Lotus Cafe Poetry Series at the Lotus Cafe in South Orange, New Jersey. Let's see, he has a one-man show called Leather Bag, Bag, in which he keeps mm -hmm. his poems, yep. among other things. And, and uh, life and all that stuff. Let's see, and chapbook, uh, Dripping a Book of Love Poetry? Mm -hmm. uh, does it's that actually mean... not, it's pronounced <clears throat> Dripping a Book of Love Poetry. Ah, well, you know, six of one, half of the other. Dramatic. Uh, does yeah. that mean to say that you've dated a lot of drips in your time? <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the, the title was chosen, I have a very popular sensual piece called Dripping, uh -huh. uh, which people like. And I chose the title for that reason, plus to let people know that it's not, the the contents are not just your typical mushy, uh -huh. sweet love poems. Oh, I see. And uh, you first started writing this book, I believe, in Dripping Springs, Texas, is that it? Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> there is such a place, believe it or not. And let's see, you've read for uh, Amiri Baraka. Mm. Uh, at Symphony Hall with the New Art Writers Collective. Right. What was that like? That was interesting. Uh, we were surprised actually that we could even get him to come out to the show. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was a poetry play, yeah. and it was one of the highlights of my career. I really enjoyed it, uh -huh. which is what boosted me into this poetry performance stuff. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. So let's see if we can boost you into a little something here. OK, I'll do a little, a little piece called I Want a Girl. And I do my pieces in characters. Okay. Okay. I want a girl to love me. To always be thinking of me. To call me sweets and sugar pops. <laughs> to make me feel like I'm the tops. To hold me in her loving arms. Melt me with her tender charms to kiss my cheek and hold my hand. Make me proud to be a man, someone who'll always be thinking of me. I want a girl to love me. I want a girl to call my name in a way that sets my soul aflame. Touch my thigh and give me chills. Fill my nights with loving thrills. Someone who be my snooky pie. The apple of these lonely eyes. To be with me for my whole life. My friend, my lover and my wife, a girl who sets my soul aflame just by the way she calls my name. Hmm. <laughs> I want to take this moment to thank uh, our producer, Thomas M. Catterson, for booking this show, Stag. <laughs> because if we had a lady poet here, this could uh, degenerate into the dating game very quickly, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Where do you get that stuff? <laughs> is it science fiction or is it? Uh... Most of it's science fiction, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you want to see some of the women I've been out with? Like... <laughs> As a matter of fact, most of my love poems are fictional. Well, you know, George is an actor. I'm sure he has a few stories. <laughs> Me, I don't have any stories. I don't, I don't know anything about it. Why do we book you? Oh, yeah. poetry, right? <laughs> okay. Oh, Dejay, how about another one? Another one? Yeah. Tell okay. us about. Give us a poem about the second date. The second date? 
That was the first one. <laughs> a poem about the second date. That would be, what would a second date be? Oh, I, I don't think I've ever graduated to that point. Um, you don't want to admit that on camera. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right, whatever you've got. <laughs> okay, I, I'll just do my leather bag poem. Okay. Uh, this is one I usually stand up, but I'll, I can do this one sitting down. You can um, stand if you like. I can stand? Yeah. Okay. But I'm not used to doing it without my hat on. Ah. Well, everybody likes a challenge, you know. That's... I walk around carrying life in a worn-out leather bag. Now, I think it's cool, but folks always telling me it's a drag. See, it's got a couple of holes in it, and life keeps spilling out, and people peek at the pieces and feel they know what it's about. They say I can turn my world around, but my bag is just too tragic. A little thread and some mask and tape, I could work a little magic. So they rush at me with advice and tape and try their best to mix it. But I guard my bag with all my heart, because it ain't broke, so don't fix it. No one seems to hear me when I say, leave me alone. Don't come too close with all that tape. I've done fine on my own. I'm sorry if it offends some with its scarred and tattered hide. But it's held my soul for all my life. And it's got my dreams inside. So don't worry about the holes I got and the safety of things within this. Take that thread and intuition and tend to your own business. Because unless it's really good advice, I will try my best to mix it. Because I like my bag the way it be. So please, don't try and fix it. Hmm. <laughs> That's telling them. I gather you don't fly very much. Fly? Yeah, on, air, on airliners? <laughs> not, a, not if I can help it that much. <laughs> well, not... the, the, the DJ is afraid that uh, the airlines will lose his bag. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, see. Let's see. We talked in the bio portion about uh, all the stuff that you're doing now, but... Uh, mm -hmm. How did you get started in the racket? We ask everybody that. How did I get started writing? Yeah. It's a racket, all right, believe me. It's a... uh, when I was a young kid in ninth grade, I had a very, uh, came from a, an abusive household. Uh -huh. And I was searching for something to do because my family is very artistic. And I was the only one that wasn't. Uh -huh. And I just remembered back when I was in the sixth grade, we did poetry. And I was, all the other kids was writing greeting card kind of stuff, and my stuff was coming out like, I, I don't know who it was coming out like. And I remembered I had a talent for it, so I started it. And plus I wanted to, I was very shy, and I wanted to impress my, my girlfriend. Was <laughs> well, one of your girlfriends, anyway. Was, uh... My first girlfriend. Okay. In ninth um, grade. Was, did you have a mentor? A mentor poet? Yeah. Uh, Shirley LaFleur. Uh -huh. But she is a recent mentor back then. 1980. Ah, I was wondering if there was anybody who guided you through those early periods where uh, of a, te a teacher, a writer? Um, no, not really. I, I just picked up all, I, I stole poetry books out of the library and I just read them. I'd like to point out for anybody who's interested in that last line, the statute of limitations <laughs> has run out and uh, so you're going to have to leave them alone. <laughs> and the fines have gone up. I'll bet they have. You know, they charge interest now. They charge interest. On those library fines. Anyway, uh, I'd like to interest you in doing another piece, if we can get it out of you. Another piece? Yeah. Okay, can I do a serious one? Sure. And I can do that one standing up to it? Yeah. Okay, this one's called How Then, If Not in Anger. Ah. Uh -huh. In which way shall peace come for me? In which way shall death? Would my peace only come in death? If so, would I pray to God grateful for peace or angry that it came too late? Would my death come violently if so, from which source shall it be dealt? From bigotry, which places little value in a race, or a religion, or a sexual preference? Would I be shot 
in cold blood by some poor soul who believes he is acting for God in eliminating my kind? Or shall it be jealousy that kills me or crime? In such a violent death, would I still find peace? If not, then how shall I pray to God? Shall I pray in fear? For I be God-fearing, and ours is a vengeful deity. If I am angry with God, then shall I be afraid, afraid of the anger of finding peace only in death, afraid of the anger of peace lost to a violent death. In what manner shall I speak if I fear God and I am angry of living in a world of disease, of inhumanity, of hate and extermination? In what manner shall I speak if I am angry and I fear God of struggling on such an earth without ever knowing peace? How then shall I pray if not in anger? Thank Ser you. Serious stuff. Um, you do community work yes. uh, in shelters and schools. Do you do shows or workshops or both? I do. When I do the both, I do uh, mm -hmm. shows and I do community workshops with kids mostly. Mm -hmm. And what do you try to teach the kids about what you've learned in poetry? The kids in school basically are poets. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and uh, they come to me right. with their work. Usually what we do is we read, and I will try my best to help inspire the kids to read, because most of the time they just don't have an outlet for an eight-year-old kid to go someplace and read poetry. Uh, so I give them an outlet, and I try to uh, help them if they're stuck in the, the poetry thing. Mm -hmm. And just to explore whatever, whatever topic that they're concerned with, to just explore uh, and put it down on paper. Mm -hmm. Have you uh, been able to develop any uh, of the kids to the point where you could put them in a show of your own? I've had them in a show, yes. I've had them in shows of my own. How'd they do? Uh, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Well, that's good to hear. Well, DJ, I want to thank you for coming on Poet the Poet. And uh, had a lot of fascinating stuff to relate here. And we'll be back in a moment with George Dickerson. So don't go away.